So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Seven, six, five, four, four. I was born a male. I started living as a female when I was 19 years old. Had a sex change when I was 30 years old. Um, I've now been living as a woman for 28 years, and I fully regret this. It, nobody can change genders. It's impossible. It's delusional. It's a mental illness. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. Once I finally had the surgery, I went, oh, this was the wrong thing to do. It was the wrong thing to do to, to cut off my male anatomy. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. They become one flesh. The fact of the matter is the 40% of people who are attempting suicide are people who regret ever changing genders. Lift off. What's up, guys? Now that you're self-determination, I wanted to show you guys, or rather, you know, let you guys listen to that particular soundbite. Uh, I thought it was very interesting based on the topic of today's discussion. Yes. This is Pharrell Williams. You guys know Pharrell from, you know, from 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 the hip hop game, from the rap industry. Um, his uh his group Nerds, uh, blah blah blah. He's been um a hip hop mogul for for quite some time now. He kind of burst onto the scene and people loved what he was doing and that shit took off. But this is what we're talking about: Pharrell on evolving masculinity and. Well, spiritual warfare. I'm not really going to get into all that because I don't think he really has anything to add to the conversation. But the new masculinity. This is what the cover of GQ called this uh, this particular uh, 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 cover, th th this article with, with Pharrell. Um, I'm trying to, let's see. In fact, let's just go to images. I don't even know why I'm doing all that. Let's just go to the images. Bam. This is what they're dubbing it here. The new masculinity. Maybe this one's better. There you go. I can enlarge it like that. The new masculinity. This is what they're dubbing this. Um, now he's wearing like a fucking uh North Face first down dress. I believe that's what it is, a fucking dress or something. But the new masculinity is, is I, I'm I'm real I'm trying to really like not circumnavigate that issue. But I'm trying to find the words to actually start this off. First and foremost, there's no fucking such thing as new masculinity. Masculinity is what the fuck it always was and always will be, right? It, it, it's not going to change. Qualities or attributes regarded as characteristics of men. That is the definition of the word masculinity. Now, toxic masculinity is why we even are having a conversation about masculinity in the first place. Toxic masculinity is thus defined by adherence to, to traditional male gender roles that restrict the kinds of emotions allowable for boys and men to express, including social expectations that men seek to be dominant, the alpha male, and limit their emotional range primarily to expressions of anger. That's what they're calling toxic male to toxic masculinity. That's what they're calling toxic masculinity. But this term, this phrase, these words have been used to ref refer to black men. Toxic masculinity has been used as a as a as a negative pejorative towards black men. It is an arm of white supremacy right now I get it male energy can be destructive male energy often is destructive um male energy is uh it, 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 it is very um 
it's very volatile. It can be very volatile if not directed into the right path, the right, if not directed into the right way. But this is what I'm trying to understand, though. Toxic masculinity. Masculinity is a bad thing. But yet there's so many fucking um, women, lesbian, gay women, who want to change sex. They want to have the gender, gender change operation. They're taking male hormones. Now, I'm trying to understand this because I know that white, white supremacy is based all on symbolism and the reversing of symbolism. I'm going to get back to this, G, this, this Pharrell shit in a minute. I just really wanted to really draw a line in the sand here. Now, while women are chasing their own masculine tendencies, right? You know, we have men getting sex change operations to be women. We know that women are having sex change operations to be men. We know that people are, you know, taking hormones and living their lives as the opposite sex and what have you. But what I'm trying to understand is if natural masculinity is toxic, then what the fuck is this unnatural shit that women are are ingesting into their bodies going to be eventually? Because from what I know and what everybody who's been around lesbian women and bull dyke women know is that gay females who are coochie crazy are more aggressive than any man on the face of the fucking planet. Gay women are more aggressive towards females than straight men are. Like, seriously. Like, they 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 are whole hounds like it is like it's like it, it's kind of hard to explain you really got to see it for yourself you really got to bear witness to it so what i'm trying to understand is male masculinity is toxic but female masculinity is what then because see they're trying they're, they're competition with us so they they i guess they feel as though they have to be more masculine in, than us in order to compete with us because every lesbian I see pretty much looks the same for the most part. You know, they wear their pants half hanging off the ass. They're usually fat, sloppy, overweight motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? And they're usually chicks who try to talk with a really deep voice. Like, <laughs> mo- mo- most of the the dom types, they're usually fat, out of shape chicks. And I find that amazing because subconsciously that's got, that is their image of what a man is. A lot of them aren't trying to be all buff and work out and know how to fight. They think if they're just fat enough to be unattractive as women, it'll make them an attractive man. That's just my little hypothesis on it. Don't mind me. I could be silly sometimes. But let me get to this um, this Pharrell thing. The new masculinity. Now, like I said, you guys are familiar with this cover of GQ magazine. Now, listen. This metrosexual agenda has taking full grip now. I have made videos on the metrosexual agenda before. It has gone, it, it is in full swing now. It is a part of the American so, uh, society now. It's a part of American culture now. Right? It, it, it's not going away anytime soon. The metrosexual agenda is, it, it is completely on blast right now. And it's working. See, what do you guys notice about this metrosexual agenda? Like, so far as media coverage is concerned, because I don't see any masculine white men on the cover of GQ in fucking dresses. You know, I, I don't see masculine white men doing the whole shit that you see a lot of fucking um, prominent or, or let, me not, let me not say prominent. You see a lot of black men in the entertainment industries are doing masculine white men aren't doing this. And, but the thing is, their masculinity isn't isn't under attack. Black masculinity is what's being what is being attacked, right? Black masculinity is what's being attacked. There are white men out here who are doing some perverted shit, but yet, who do you see on the news? Cuba Gooding Jr., Bill Cosby, R. Kelly. These are the people, these are the images that you're seeing on the news so far as toxic masculinity is concerned. I said it before and I'll say it again. Ben Roethlisberger, from what I understand, was accused of or raped three chicks. And nobody's talking about that to this day. The three people that watch this video, maybe they'll talk about it. But nobody else seems to be talking about this shit. But anyway, so. You can't change masculinity. Masculinity is what it's, it is and what it's always going to be, right? See, in the black community, 
now, man, it, oh man, um, there was uh, I guess you can call it a documentary that was put out. Basically, listen, white supremacy has been studying black people ever since we have been in confinement in this country, and they not only do they know how our minds work, they know how to stimulate and agitate responses from us. They know exactly what they need to do to get us to do what they want us to do. As long as we deny our blackness and deny each other and constantly fight with each other and be at each other's throats, white supremacy is always going to win against us. It's always going to win because we are not focused on what we really need to be focused on. See, white supremacy knows that black people worship celebrity. And we do. We worship celebrity. We worship celebrity. Somebody famous can say the dumbest shit on the face of the planet. A black celebrity can say the dumbest shit on the face of the planet. You will wake up tomorrow and have black people that you once thought intelligent repeating that same stupid shit. Doing the same stupid shit. Everything our celebrities do, we imitate and copy that shit. So if you want black people to be on a certain agenda or be with a certain agenda, have a celebrity sell it to them. Think about it. Zoe Williams said this first. Subscribe to um, the Zoe What Show, The Voice of Reason. Zoe Williams, a real smart brother. No college degrees. Just a brother who likes education and who likes to read. Listen, he said this shit and I agree with it. If the mainstream media is talking about it, then corporate America has paid for it. You understand what I'm saying? It didn't make it to mainstream media if corporate America wasn't backing it. Corporate America is backing the metrosexual and gay agenda as an arm, as a wing of white supremacy. They're backing that shit. That's why it is in the fucking media because corporate America is backing this shit. This is war. We just think that war is just one thing, which is why my people don't understand war. We think it's one thing. Guns blazing, blood, fists, explosions, death, beating the shit out of people. That's not all war is. War is also psychological and mental, which is why black people really, really need to start playing chess more. Because if we did, we'd understand these tactics a lot better. Black people who play chess, I guarantee you, they peep the bullshit. Teach your children how to play chess. It, it engages both sides of the brain, the left and right hemisphere, simultaneously. It's a good thing to do, man. It's really, it's a really good thing to do. Teach your sons and daughters how to play chess. But anyway, this is an like for instance, like like hip hop for instance, rap music as offensive as it as it can be, is not going anywhere because it is backed by corporate America because it is another arm of white supremacy that they have adopted since the incarnation of it, and or rather since it became a more popular art form in the 80s and the 90s. They co-opted this shit because they knew they could use it against us. You feed, fill their heads with nothing but negative images by people that they look up to, and they'll live up. For instance, like all the negative stereotypes about black people. Every negative stereotype about black people was placed on us by other people. So what we do now that Jim Crow has fully taken shape in our communities, we actually live up to the stereotypes that other people assign to us. These aren't stereotypes that we labeled ourselves with. These are things that other people said about us. And because we were stripped of everything that we have and everything that we are and were, our language, our culture, our music, our spirituality, all that shit, we gravitated and just put our hooks into anything that we thought would define us. We let other people define who the fuck we are, which is why we're lost. Which is why they can use a motherfucker like Pharrell. Like, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know how many of you guys watch the Corey Holcomb show, but I agree with Corey Holcomb. If you are a black man and you have gone through the process of dyeing your entire skull blonde, you are suffering from mental illness. In my opinion, you're suffering from mental illness. Because who are you imitating by... Doing that to your hair. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. I thought somebody was about to fucking fight outside. But um, anyway, not that I was about to grab my phone and fucking Instagram that shit. 
I was just just curious about the live talk. Anyway, back on track. The the, the, the homosexual and metrosexual agendas, they are using those to influence the mind of young black men and older black men. I look at grown ass men in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, and they walking around with their pants hanging off their asses. Our people are very susceptible to fucking um God damn. It, it, it's, it's, it's really sad. It's really sad. But let me get back to the the whole blonde hair thing. Now, I think there's some that there's something to be said about a, about a man, about black people, period, who want to look so much like white people. I think that is I, th- I think there's some mental illness there. This man has on a coat dress. How how long before he takes that takes that shit off and steps out of the pants and puts on a dress all together? Like this shit here. Like, I mean, look, it may be name brand and all that shit, but we all, look, man, if you've been following the media, anything in the past fucking six to eight months, the past 20 years, these, these, um, these high priced, uh, fashion moguls don't they're, they're white supremacists they don't like black people many of them have said they do not make their clothes for black people Versace, Gucci all these motherfuckers hate black people so for real I, look people look at what he has on and say oh that shit's expensive it must be dope but he looks like a flaming homosexual in this picture in these pictures that sweater is gay. Those referee pants, gay. And I'm not saying that anybody who's gay should be ashamed of it. What I'm saying is straight men pushing a gay agenda on other straight men, that's the fucking problem. Being gay isn't the problem. Pushing, using heterosexual men or even metrosexual men to push the idea onto straight men, that's what I have the problem with. Like this sweater here, this cardigan. That's a female, that's female jewelry, man. That's a female sweater. That's a, that is female apparel. I'm sorry, that's female apparel, man. There there is no getting, there's no getting around that. The dude is wearing female apparel. Sorry. But anyway. War has been waged against the black male. Black male masculinity See, but see, the thing is, black male masculinity is a threat to white supremacy. It is a threat to white men, right? It's not a threat to anybody else. It's a threat to men of other races, which is why other races of men, you know, jump along and, and, and jump at the opportunity to gang up on us with white people, East Indians, Asians, all the, all the Hispanics, all the motherfuckers do it. Fuck all of them. You know what I'm saying? They all do it. But... This war between black people and white people, we they're at one end of the spectrum, we're at the other. Everybody else, <coughs> excuse me, everybody else is pretty much caught in the middle. Everybody else, even though these other races have their strengths and all that and things that they contribute to the world and the global society and economic society and all of that, cool, fine, whatever. But black and white people are the ones that predict the pace of the, all this shit. If we eradicate all white people and eliminate white supremacy. Guess who dick they're going to ride next? I mean, seriously. I mean, <laughs> I mean, seriously, right? Motherfuckers follow behind white people more or less because they're afraid of them than anything. Well, I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't say because they're afraid. But it's, it is the power that they exhibit that people admire. And people want to imitate that shit. They imitate us. They imitate them. You understand what I'm saying? They, they, people try to ride both sides of the spectrum while in the middle is their own culture that they're trying not to ignore as well. You understand what I'm saying? We win, it's all us. They win, it's all them. Well, it's all it's been all them for the past 400 years. But you guys know what I'm saying. Everybody else falls in between this. White supremacy has targeted black people because we are the strongest threat to them physically, mentally, Genetically, we are their biggest threat. They know this, and they want to eliminate and eradicate us. If the majority of our men are more interested in being women, then the males of our enemy have nothing to worry about. 
they can slowly but surely start to eliminate us. See, the homosexual and metrosexual agenda, this is population. This, 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 this is a population control. Understand this. This, this is population control at, at its most craftiest. Because if men stop having sex with women and impregnating them, and they start wanting to have sex with men more, and then on top of that, wanting to not even be many more men anymore and get their dicks and balls cut off, further ensuring that they will never be able to be allowed to procreate, they win. They win. Do you understand? They are at zero population growth. Zero population growth. Meaning more, pe more people out of their group are dying off of the planet than being born. The continent of Africa has the youngest population of people on the planet. While Caucasians and other people that are closely related to them genetically have the oldest population of people on the planet. The young's got it. The young ones always got it. Y youth is always going to win out over age. This is warfare. Understand all this, all these gay images. This is warfare. The police going into black people's homes and murdering them. This is fucking warfare. This is warfare. And I'm going to tell y'all again, I've said this, I've said this before. The only thing white supremacy fucking respects is swift, blinding violence and fear and money. I'll add money into that. Those are the only things they, res they respect. Fear, swift, blinding violence or money. That's all they respect. And I'm saying that because I know I have dealt with, talked to and done business with white supremacists, but I find it amazing the stories that black people tell me, or not tell me, but I have heard on YouTube, oh, like like the one, I, I know this is supposed to be about this shit, but I, I gotta go into this rant. Uh, I'm gonna do a video about this too. Young brother, I don't even think he was 18, so he was a teenager or whatever. Threw a piece of trash on the ground. Fucking racist ass, bitch ass, piece of shit ass, cave demon ass, white bitch. Comes up to him and tell him to pick the trash, get on the knees and pick the trash up. Drop a couple of M-bombs on him, all kinds of shit. You know what this dude says? I just wanted to cry. I wanted to cry. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to cry. You know what this motherfucker's mama said? We're going to pray for her. Man, look, check this out, man. Check this out. This is why, listen, all, all the women out there, do not take offense to this. But you're not men. You can't, you cannot teach someone how to be something you've never been. I'll admit, I can't teach it. I can raise the shit out of a daughter, but I can't teach a do my daughter how to be a woman. I can't do it because I don't know how to be a woman. I've never been one. Can't teach her how to be. Can't teach her how to be. And vice versa. Women, you don't have what it takes to teach your son how to be a man. So when your son should be out in the street slapping the shit out of a bitch like this, and I'm not advocating violence, what I am advocating, though, is getting people the fuck out of your face. Instead of putting, you know what, slapping the shit out of her was the wrong thing. She didn't put his, her hands on him. Maybe slapping the shit out of her would have been extreme. How about this? How about, um, <clears throat> he should have gave that bitch the business. He should have barked on that bitch and cussed her ass the fuck out. Bitch, get the fuck out of my, whatever the fuck he got to say. Get that bitch out of his face. But what the fuck are you praying for people who don't like you for? You're praying for them, and they're praying for your demise. You're praying to the same God. They're winning this war. Who the fuck do you think your God is really listening to? So I like, that's all I'm going to say about that part. But anyway, all of those kinds of things. These are the new generation's role models. Motherfuckers like Pharrell who want to wear coat dresses and say it's the new masculinity. If the new masculinity is anything other than what masculinity has always been, then it's not masculinity anymore. It's the new feminism. It's the, it's the new femininity. That's what the fuck it is. It's the, that's what the fuck this really is. See, see, see I don't want to make this video too long. I just really wanted to cover this topic, but I'm going to go ahead and drop this real quick. So check this out. White supremacy is all about reverse symbolism. It's all about reversing symbolism and reversing shit like they're doing now in society. You know, wh white America, the white media is putting all this metrosexual and homosexual shit out there, right? While the Christian right is vehemently against homosexuality and the LGBTQ community. But 
they will allow it as long as it is weaponized towards black people. <laughs> they will allow this shit as long as the, it, it, as long as it has been weaponized against us. They'll allow this shit. We are at fucking war, man. People like Pharrell who are willing to trade his masculinity in just to get recognition in a paycheck, knowing that he's influencing the minds of millions, possibly billions of black kids across the world, men, boys, girls, women. He should be fucking ashamed of himself. Every black man, Tate Diggs, um, Future, all you ASAP Rocky, all you motherfuckers who want to go out in public wearing dresses and carrying purses and all that kind of shit. All you dudes who want to set us back. Fuck y'all, man. Seriously. You motherfuckers aren't role models. You understand? You mother, you. In fact, what y'all do, y'all don't do for us anyway. Y'all do it because it's what white people tell you they'll pay you to do. So, I think we need to draw a line in the sand. And we need to get these sucker-ass niggas out of our community. We need to excommunicate these motherfuckers. Just like the church to excommunicate your ass if you if you... If you make grave offenses to them, we need to start excommunicating motherfuckers out of our fucking communities. Because they don't want to be a part of our communities anyway. They want to be a part of white community. Let white community, let white America have them. Let the, You can have Pharrell. You can have the futures of the world. You can have the ASAP Rockies of the world. You can have the niggas that want to wear dresses and purses and shit and call it the new masculinity. You can have all of those dudes. Listen. That homophobic shit... I think the term is stupid. Homophobia, I'm not afraid of gay people. I don't even have an adverse reaction towards them whatsoever. I don't necessarily agree with the act of being homosexual. I don't agree with it. I think it's unnatural, personally. I'm not saying that homosexuality doesn't ha- occur in nature. I'm not saying that. But, I, but I'm sure there are certain stimuli that is involved with that. However... That's beyond the point. I'm not a fucking microbiologist and none of that shit, a neuroscientist. So all I'm going to say is I know that homosexuality, it does occur in nature, but I also know that we live in a world where people will follow trends, even if it's something that hurts them. If it's trending and it's popular, people, most motherfuckers will try it at least once. A lot of people are here. We we live in a world that is 95, full, 95% of the people on this planet are followers. The other 5% are the people that are actually controlling shit. 95% of people in society are D and C students who are waiting for someone else to tell them what the fuck to do. (laughs) It's the fucking truth, man. It's the truth. It is the fucking truth. Anyway, I mean, think about it. Mormonism exists. Scientology exists. Scientology, these motherfuckers are, it exists. So that right there goes to prove what I'm saying. People are looking to be led around by their necks, like they have a leash and a collar on. They're looking to be led around like that. 95% of the public are sheep. It's the uh, it's the 5% of those motherfuckers that you really got to watch out for. They're the ones calling the shots. They're the ones calling the shots. What is it? I'm not going to get into all that. Listen, we're at war, guys. We're at war. White supremacy has revved up the uh, revved up their um their ammo. They've reloaded their guns. They've restocked their armories. They ready. They ready. They they are ready to combat whatever the fuck it is we got going. The, 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 this new black power, black media, black education movement. This he- he- metrosexual homosexual agenda is how they're going to combat that shit. That and the black identity extremist label. That's how they're going to combat this new movement that's coming. Mind you, we need to start excommunicating the funguses among us. We, we re- The fungi among us. We, we really do need to start weeding these motherfuckers out. Putting their asses on blast and excommunicating them out of the community. Because they're taking... They're taking they they they're, they're taking something away from our community, and we need to stop that shit. Anyway, I'm getting long winded now. Listen, there is no such thing as new masculinity, and if this is the new masculinity, basically it's just the same old gay. This isn't the new masculinity. This is the same old gay. This is the same old metrosexual homosexual shit. There's nothing there's nothing masculine about a man who gets his nails and toes done, 
who wears thongs and want to wear tight ass dresses and skinny jeans and dye his hair blonde and act like a bitch. There's nothing masculine about that. That's not new masculinity. That's old homosexuality. That's old uh, metrosexuality or whatever the fuck you call it. That's what that is. You might call that shit the new feminine, but it damn sure ain't no new masculine. I, I, it's the new gay. I'm sorry. I, I, it, or it's the same old gay. This is not new masculinity. It's the same old gay. So, with that being said, I've rant and ranted and raved on enough about this. I may do another video about this. I really don't have time to compile the videos like I used to, but uh, this definitely needs more discussion. So please like, you know, subscribe, add your comments in the comment section if I haven't turned those off or have every comment going up for review before I post to the channel. I'm going to have to check that out. But anyway, subscribe, like, holla at your boy, peace.